Hello families in our Yonkers Learning Community. My name is Miss Finneran and today is Wednesday, April 22nd. Just wearing my mask to show all of you we all need to be wearing masks, especially when we go outside and we interact with other people. Sometimes we can't help it if we have to walk the dog or check the mail or maybe um, take out the garbage. You might cross paths with other people, so make sure you're wearing your masks when you do that. Our read aloud of the day today is going to be a book titled The Bravest Fish. Now, by Matt Buckingham. While I'm reading the book, I'm going to be making sure that I do some things that good readers do. Some things that good readers do are they always read the title and that gives them an idea of maybe what the book is going to be about. They can use the pictures to help them make predictions or understand the story better. Good readers also make connections with what is happening in the story. So sometimes something will happen to a character that has maybe happened to us in our own way, in our own lives. So we can really understand what the character is feeling or maybe what the character is going through. Or we can make a connection that reminds us of something that happened to someone who we know or maybe something that happened in another book or a story that we heard about on the news. So making connections, meaning, yeah, I really get that and I know about that from somewhere else is a really important part of being a good reader. So also, before we begin, one other thing I would like to listen for as we are reading is the way we say things in the past tense. Now, I know before I have talked about adding ed to the ends of verbs to tell a story that has already happened or to talk about something from last year or last week or five minutes ago or from kindergarten a long time ago. But today we're going to not just look at the ED, but look at other ways that things happen in the past tense in English. And these are irregular verbs and they can be tricky. So we need to listen very carefully for them. So usually I will say something like, Today I live in White Plains, but last year I lived in Yonkers. Or today I call my mother because the last time I called her was one week ago. Our irregulars don't follow this ED pattern. Our irregular verbs follow a different pattern. And these are some irregular verbs that you will see in this book and here in this book. Another one that I skipped is say, uh, which is said in the past tense, and we will come across that as we're reading in the text. But today I am happy. And yesterday I was happy also. Today you are listening to me read the book. And I hope last week you were listening as well. Today is Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. Wake up. I wake up at 8 a.m. But when we were in school, I woke up at 6 a.m. every day. I decided to speed off in my car. I speed off in my car in the morning so I'm not late to work, which is wrong. But in the past, I sped off. I see, I see you right now. And I also saw all of you when we were still together in the classroom. Find, today I find my keys, but yesterday, I found them in the garbage can. That's where I found them. I feel, today I feel pretty relaxed, but yesterday I felt mm, a little nervous. Felt, 
have. Hmm. I have plenty of time today, but yesterday I had very little time. Had. Tell. Let me tell you something. Oh, I already told you? Last year? Oh no, okay, I won't tell you again if I already told you last year in 2019. That was a long time ago. So these are our irregular verbs that I would like to listen for while I'm reading. There's another one that I did not put on the list. Say becomes said. Say is said in the past. Let's see if I have a marker to write that down. Okay. So if I say something now, I don't add the ed because it's irregular. I change say into said. Okay. Listen for these verbs while I'm reading. Also, I want you to think about what good readers do. You can see if I'm doing what good readers do while I'm reading. And um, remember, we're reading the title, we're using the pictures to help us, and we are trying to make some connections if we can while we read. Okay, the bravest fish. I'm in Oliver's room today. I got my son Oliver's room. I kind of got tired of the background of my dining room, so I wanted to change it up a little bit. So this is my son Oliver's room. The Bravest Fish by Matt Buckingham. Originally titled Bright Stanley, so it used to have a different name. Hmm, interesting. Far below the waves, a little fish named Stanley lived with his school. School? No, f fish live together in a school. It's like the sound of a classroom or where you go to school, but a group of fish is called a school. They were the brightest, sparkliest fish of the deep, dark sea. One morning, Stanley woke up late. Hello, it's me, he called to his friends, but the reef was strangely quiet. Let's see if I can get the pictures here for you. Okay. Suddenly, Stanley remembered that today was the day his school swam to cooler waters for the summer. Jump in, jellyfish, he groaned. He hurried to the meeting point as fast as his fins could carry him. But no one was there. As he looked around, he saw a bright light. Aha! They haven't gone far, he said, and he raced toward the glow. but it was only a lobster counting coins. Go away, don't touch my treasure. The lobster growled, snip snapping his claws. I'm looking for my friends, said Stanley. Fish, the lobster grumbled. Those others were in such a hurry to find someone they upset my coins. Others, asked Stanley. My friends? Join them then, snarled the lobster, and Stanley sped off. Ahead of him, Stanley saw a shimmer. He could just make out a bright, sparkly fish. One of his friends. Hello, it's me, he called, swimming faster. Clunk! Stanley crashed head first into something hard. Jumping jellyfish, he cried. It wasn't one of his friends at all, but his own reflection in a shiny pearl. Stanley rubbed his bumped nose, feeling a little dazed. He didn't notice the dark shape coming up 
behind him. <gasps> I wonder what the dark shape is. Let me use the picture to make a prediction. Hmm, I see the dark shape in the picture. I'm making a prediction right now about what that dark shape is. Ooh, this picture gives me another prediction about what the dark shape is. It definitely confirms my first prediction. When he turned around, Stanley found himself staring straight into the mouth of a huge <gasps> shark. My prediction was right. I predicted shark based on the, the pictures. Ah! Stanley shrieked. Over coral and under weeds, he sped with the shark snapping at his tail. Finally, Stanley saw a small hole in a rock below. He dove down inside just to miss being gobbled up. Ooh, look at Stanley's face. He does not look happy. He looks like a lot of things are bothering him right now. Deep within the cave, Stanley shivered and shook. He felt sad and lonely. He was beginning to think he'd never see his friends again. Hmm. I'm kind of making a connection here. I can't remember the last time I saw my friends. Well, I can't stay here forever, he said at last. Stanley poked his head out of the cave to see if the shark had left. Jumping jellyfish, he squealed. The sea was a golden orange, glowing and glittering. It was the most wonderful sight he had ever seen because there in front of him were... Mm. His friends! Hello, it's me, he called. Stanley! His friends cheered. Where have you been? We've been looking all over for you. And Stanley told them his adventures as they swam off in one bright, sparkly, happy school. The end. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I hope you thought about what good readers do. I hope you listen for past tense irregular verbs and stay safe, stay well, wear your masks when you go out. If you need to go out, try to stay home as much as possible. And I hope to see all of you very, very soon.